Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And welcome to the GSIA Market Update webinar, latest ESG development in Japan. My name is Masaru Rai. I'm chair of the Japan Sustainable Investment Forum, JSF. And JSF is a member of the Global Sustainable Investment Alliance, GSIA, along with the six members in Australasia, the UK, Europe, Canada, and United States. And this webinar is the second of a series of the webinar GSI hold this year, following the UK in April. Other market will follow this webinar over the course of the year. This we webinar series is to hear about what's happening across the global market regarding sustainability and responsible investment, the policies for the uh, financial industry co collaboration, and understand what's happening in the countries covered by GSIA. We are really pleased to welcome you today live from Tokyo. And I want to start by explaining about JSC. In Japan, the first ACO fund was launched in 1999, and JSC members got together to promote the ambition to advocate a sustainability investment concept in Japan. Japan's mission is to es es establish a social norm which support investing in socially responsible organizations and projects, which in turn will be able to solve various social problems and develop a social uh, sustainable market. JSF received support from investors, financial institutions, service providers, and consulting firms and acquire the corporate status of a not-for-profit organization in 2004. JSF offers and forum to exchange opinions and learning opportunities for institutions and individuals interested in sustainable investing. JSF also encourages companies to disclose more non-financial information and aim to develop sound sustainability market in Japan. It took a long time though before sustainable investing became popular among asset owners and asset managers in Japan. Still, the market started to expand rapidly in 2015 when Japan's government pension fund, uh, GPIF, became a signatory of the PLI. Along with this expansion, JSF started sending questionnaires to the institutional investors annually and reporting the changes happening in the sustainable market in Japan. In addition to collecting the outstanding amount of the unit uh, trust assets with sustainable strategies for retail investors. And before we turn to our speakers today, I want to tell you to some key survey results for 2021. Yoshida-san, uh, first speech, please. The sustainable investment asset in 2001, or oh, sorry, 2015, when GSF started the survey, were only 26 trillion yen, but reached 514 trillion yen. That is equivalent to 4.5 trillion US dollars in seven years to today. In 2020, the market shrank slightly, but this reflects the COVID-19 impact on the global equity market, which declined briefly in March uh, and uh, also in February. And that almost uh, responded to the survey, collected the figures at the end of March, the Japanese financial year end. So that's the uh, effect of the decline. Next page, please. The proportion of the sustainable investment assets relative to the total assets under management reached 62% last year from 35% in 2017. Next page, please. With sustainable investment strategies, ESG integration increased by 116% over the year to 2021. Another significant change was the impact investing in listed companies, which jumped and became five times larger in one year time, although the market size is still tiny. 
Next, please. Next speech, please. By asset class, domestic and global equity increased 36% and 57% respectively. Still, when adjusted the figures for the market recovery of the year, these figures remained about the same and did not reflect the expansion of the ESG investing. I observed a jump in private equities by 265%. Next, please. Next page, please. Uh, we have experienced a significant change in the retail market over the last two years. The outstanding amount of the sustainable unit trust funds peaked once in 2007 with the backdrop of a global financial crisis. Since then, it hovered at a very low level for a long time, but suddenly started to boost from 2020 and reached almost 4 trillion yen, nearly four times the previous peak. And interestingly, most of these new funds focus on the impact of the sustainable investing on uh, sorry, <coughs> sustainable investing. Some funds report the CO2 reduction figures of the fund compared to the conventional market index and explain the ESG criteria of each select investment companies and the company's strategy to reduce to CO2 emissions and their target to need zero emissions by 2050. So JSA believes the detailed disclosure of this investment impact provided by the fund manager is uh, one of the fundamental reasons of this jump in the ESG fund for the last two years, because this disclosure improved the transparency of this fund significantly. As responsible investment become mainstream and uh, uh, in a rapid evol evolving and competitive market landscape, Invest firms are increasingly facing a challenge in ensuring their staff are familiar with ESG issues at every stage of their investment process. Uh, so uh, we delivered, uh, next page please, maybe. <clears throat> uh, tackling this problem, Joseph translated the PLI Academy online responsible investment training course in Japanese and uh, with the uh, general support of the Ministry of Environment and the PLI Academies. And this course might be, uh, well, uh, it's uh, critical for the organization training and up skills of their teams and reduce the investment skill and enhance their capacity as asset managers. So uh, we are hoping that all uh, asset managers and asset in, uh, in, I said investors will use these kind of uh, more useful educa educational programs. Uh, well, in Japan, policymakers have played a crucial role in sustainable and transitioned finance. JSF recently counted how many Japanese JSF executives attended as a member of the administrative committees. And we found that the JSF executive attended over 40 committees held by various ministries. Uh, now, we have with us today a special guest, uh, Ms. Motoko Ogawa, Deputy Director of Environment, Economy Office, Industry Science and Technology Poli Policy and the Environment Bureau of Japan, Ministries of Economy, Trade and Industry, METI. Thank you, Ogawa-san, for joining us today and welcome to this session. Now, I'd like to hand it over to you, Ogasan, please. Uh, Alexa, thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Motoko Ogawa of MEDI. Uh, I'm in charge of environmental finance at MEDI, and I have been involved in policy making on climate transition. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to participate in the edition webinar on latest ESG development in Japan. Today, I focus on climate transition finance, the new but important concept which allows different industries and parties to reach a common summit of carbon neutrality 2050 through multiple paths. Next page, please. 
uh, to realize our global co uh, carbon neutral goals, green initiatives uh, such as introducing renewable energy is very important. And green finance such as green bonds and loans are expanding as you well, own, as you well know. Um, promoting innovation is also indispensable to achieve the carbon neutral goal and therefore finance for innovation such as government funding becomes a driving force. However, we are missing an important category in reaching carbon neutrality, that is transition. There are hard to abate sectors which do not have op optional zero emission solution today because innovative technologies are not ready in a technological or economic sense. And also because energy mix is based on geographical backgrounds. Companies in such sectors cannot immediately jump into the decarbonized society. And there has not yet been an effective financial tool to adequately support their pathways to reach carbon neutral goals. Here arises a dilemma. Even if a company committed to carbon neutral, neutral targets and strategy and has serious R&D of net zero technologies, and investment plans, it could be under-evaluated. Or what is worse, there is a possibility of divestment. Nevertheless, the required amount of investment in this area is huge, and that's why transition finance plays a crucial role to bridge the gap. Therefore, we are developing a business environment where all players have access to finance. According to the transition pathways, through green bonds, transition bonds, and finance for innovation. Next page, please. Government of Japan promotes transition finance through three-step policy tools. Firstly, METI, together with Financial Services Agency and Ministry of Environment, formulated basic guidelines on climate transition finance in May 2021. This is in line with Transition Finance Handbook by ICMA or ICMA. Secondly, from autumn 2021 to spring 2022, METI has published spe sector-specific roadmaps to indicate technologies deemed as tra transitional. Seven hard to abate sectors are covered in the area of material, iron steel, chemicals, cement, and paper and pulp, and of energy and electricity, gas and oil. Thirdly, starting from last summer, many have selected model cases of transition finance and have subsidized their certification process. So far, we have selected 12 good cases, good model cases, uh, amounting to 2.5 billion US dollar in projected procurement. This could be less because of the weak Japanese end today. Uh, compared to the other financial tool, financing tools, the uniqueness of transition finance is that a strategy to net zero is required. That is, the adequacy of the use of proceeds or setting KPIs is not the only element of judgment. Requiring a lower strategy is quite demanding. Next page, please. I will briefly introduce the basic guidelines on climate transition finance. As transition finance is relatively new, we should establish a reliable market. METI shared this idea with Financial Services Agency and Ministry of Environment, so we jointly formulated these basic guidelines. The basic guidelines describe four key elements to be assured in transition finance. Number one, Companies need to have a strategy to achieve the goal of the Paris Agreement and appropriate, appropriate governance to practice such strategy. Number two, core business activities are environmentally material. Number three, pathways, are target based, pathways and targets based on companies' own strategy should be science-based. Number four, disclosure, disclosure of the investment plan and reporting are crucial. The basic guidelines are consistent with the Climate Transition Finance Handbook published by ICMA, as I mentioned, that published in December 2020. 
some important points of the basic guidelines are use of proceeds or KPI should be based on strategies. With regard to the third element, science-based strategies, international recognized scenarios such as IEA and also NDC and government directions such as Japan's uh, sector roadmaps can be referred. External verification and assurance are recommended. Next page, please. Let me next introduce our sector roadmaps. The most important thing in the roadmap is credibility. We try to secure credibility in three aspects. That is, the roadmap is comprehensive, um, ambitious, and feasible. First, the roadmap in seven sectors cover approximately 70% of total CO2 emissions in Japan. We are going to formulate a roadmap for automobile this year, so the coverage will increase to over 80%. So that is uh, comprehensiveness. Secondary, uh, second, ambitious. Secondary, the roadmap is ambitious as all sectors aim to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. We have set up a task force formulating roadmaps for climate transition finance, consisting of experts on technology and the environment from academia and representatives from industry and finance. They discuss intensively to make sure each roadmap is consistent with the international recognized scenarios, including the speed of the introduction of new technologies such as hydrogen. And if it is aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement, as well as net zero by 2050. Sadly, uh, the roadmap is feasible as technology in the roadmap will be implemented by the support of the national policies, including Japan's NDC targeting 64% GHG reduction by 2030, and other fundamental national policies, such as the Green Growth Strategy and the Basic Energy Plan. Although various entities, such as research institutions and NGOs, have published transition pathways, Japan's roadmap, supported by both high ambition and national policies, provide a feasible and credible emission pathway. The roadmap is intended for the use of both companies and for the financial sector. As mentioned, companies are required to have a strategy to achieve carbon neutrality and based on science-based targets and pathways. Therefore, companies can refer to the roadmap when they explain the adequacy of the new facility that they are going to introduce. On the other hand, financial institutions can use the roadmap as reference to evaluate if companies meet the criteria to be deemed as transition activities. As for the content, the roadmap shows various technology options toward 2050 incorporating both existing technology and future available technologies with the timing of the practical application. Estimated CO2 emissions associated with the introduction of technologies are also shown. The roadmap is a living document to be updated if necessary in accordance with technological development needs by financial sectors and geopolitical situation. Next page, please. I introduce you an example of roadmap for power sector. It shows uh, the left side. I choose a step-by-step introduction of decarbonized power sources, such as renewables, hydrogen, summer plant, nuclear, and CCUS. As hydrogen firing and CCUS are currently in development stage, the roadmap shows the installation starting in 2030. Separately, we recategorize categorize transition power, such as co-firing fuel, ammonia, hydrogen, and biomass with existing coal and gas summer plants. Ammonia and hydrogen co-firing are currently under demonstration, but will be introduced in the 2020s. On the right is the roadmap for iron and steel. The, the difficulty of this sector is having no viable zero carbon technologies today. As you can see in this decade, best available technologies we can implement are energy saving, 
energy saving measures and increase of efficiency. After 2030s, we project a gradually increased access to innovative technologies shown in colored arrows, such as hydrogen-based steel making of brass panels and hydrogen-based DRI. Therefore, we assume the CO2 reduction pathway is gentle in the 2020s and 2030s, but steep in the 2040s. To summarize, generally, in the 2020s and 2030s, innovative technologies may not be viable and energy saving and efficiency measures can be utilized to maximize extent. In the 40s, today's R&D efforts will materialize and dramatically, dramatically accelerate reductions. This incorporation of future technologies and the investment is a notable difference from the concept of taxonomies. We also uh, note that the slopes of reduction pathways for power, steel, and other industries are different, and all sectors are heavily influenced by the reduction of CO2 emissions in the power sector. Next page, please. Uh, let me uh, now introduce actual cases of using transition finance study in Japan. JFE Holdings is a major Japanese iron steel company. They issued transition bonds of 30 billion yen, and that is the first case in the iron steel sector worldwide. With regard to their transition plan targets, JFE committed to achieve net sale by 2050 and reduction of CO2 emissions by 30% in 2030. They plan to invest in innovative steel making process, energy saving, manufacturing of eco-friendly products, such as electromagnetic steel seats and EVs, and renewable energy systems. It means that JFE carries out energy savings by using best currently available technologies, Contribute, contributes to other sectors' reduction of CO2 emission with their products and prepare themselves to switch to carbon neutral operations, enabled by drastic innovation, innovation strat, uh, technologies. Uh, another case is saving, but I will uh, skip the NYK today and I will explain uh, more on. The, our initiatives in Asia. Next page, please. Japan's efforts on transition finance is not closed inside Japan. We support wider spread of the concept in emerging countries, especially Asian region, where energy demand is expected to grow along with the, uh, economic growth. In this context, Media has hosted the Asia Green Growth Partnership Ministerial Meeting, or AGGPM. As part of Japan's comprehensive support package, Asian Energy Transition Initiative, AT, we supported a launch of Asian Transition Finance Study Group led by over 40 private financial institutions and others in September 2021. The AT the F study group aims to provide practical guidance, guidelines for transition finance and risk of support required from governments and other stakeholders. The ATF study group released an interim summary in April 2022, and final recommendation is expected in September 2022. Through these initiatives, we will support Asian countries to make steady steady progress toward realistic transition while maintain, maintaining a balance between economic development and people's lives. Uh, next page, please. Thank you. The, this last slide is the wider picture of sustainable finance policy in Japan, shown in Clean Energy Strategy Interim Report very recently published. The report covers uh, uh, actually um, the report covers a wider uh, issues related to net zero, and even in finance area, there are many aspects. So transition is just one piece, 
and uh, this is highly related to other areas, green and innovation, of course, and also that depends on the foundation of, for example, disclosure, uh, maintenance, maintenance of credibility, and increase the market environment. So companies are expected to move quickly for decarbonization. To do this, the support of financial sector is very important and final sector needs to understand the issues that companies are facing. Therefore, in finance, cooperation between government sectors is also uh, indispensable. I'm in charge of industry and work closely with my counterpart in finance service agency and Minister of Environment very frequently. They are also involved in this uh, universe. Today, I introduced policies of transition finance at METI, but this is not closed in METI, so this is how we cope with the climate finance policy in Japan. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Oga-san and Arai-san, for your uh, brief but very uh, intense report about the recent development of uh, ESG market in Japan and also the uh, government's, um, government's uh, very strong uh, message to promote uh, sustainable finance. And next, we'd like to go on to this panel discussion session. And then first speaker will be uh, Hayashi-san and, and she'll be talking about the general trend of the recent development of the financial industry by financial agencies and so on. Hayashi-san, please. Thank you very much, Kawit-san. Okay, and good afternoon and good morning, everybody. Uh, so my name is Reiko Hayashi, and then I work for Bank of America, and then also uh, one of the executives at Japan SIF. Um, so let me talk about the current government initiative surrounding uh, uh, sustainable finance. I have been involved in several working groups uh, set by the government, including Task Force on Transition Finance, which I work closely with Ogawa-san. And then Ogawa-san mentioned Japan government are making a lot of efforts to promote sustainable finance, including transition finance to achieve net zero. Uh, next page, please. The speed of the government initiatives have accelerated very rapidly after Prime Minister uh, Suga announced to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 in October 2020. And then uh, the task force on uh, transition finance uh, started and then also released basic guidelines on climate transition finance, just uh, Ogasa mentioned. But also another remarkable progress in my mind is that FSA started being uh, heavily involved in the initiatives as well. They established expert panel of sustainable finance with members uh, from various backgrounds, such as financial institutions, Japan uh, uh, JPX, researchers, academia, as well as corporate issuers, including three JCF members. The panel released the report in June last year, as you see, after intensive discussion for six months, and then we release the update of the progress for the past one year shortly. Uh, please go to page three. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, copy from FSA uh, homepage, and I'm not going through all details. There are so many information, so uh, I'm not going to talk in details, but please look at that later. Uh, and then uh, go back to page two. Okay, I'd like to talk about the points, uh, the highlighted points of the following pages as you have just seen. Uh, there are four major focuses there uh, of FSA Sustainable Finance uh, Panel uh, Report. Uh, first three, disclosure. The sustainable bond market has grown rapidly, as Arai-san mentioned, but we are hearing that we need more transparency and comparability. Tokyo Stock Exchange is encouraging the companies listed on Tokyo Stock Exchange prime market to enhance quality and quantity of disclosure based on TCFD 
or on an equivalent international framework. We should monitor the progress of discussion also uh, ISSB or SEC and so on in global markets. Secondly, it is said that we need to enhance the market platform to promote sustainable finance. Uh, this theme covers information platform by JPX, code of conduct of ESG evaluators, and so on. Thirdly, in Japan, bank lending plays a significant role in financing. Therefore, dialogue or engagement by banks with corporate would be essential for promoting sustainable finance. Lastly, last but not least, there are several other themes which are important for the promotion of sustainable finance. Uh, so transition is one of the uh, elements and then it's on track as Ogasa mentioned. But in addition to that, I really think it is important to increase, increase skilled professionals in finance and technology for sustainable business. As Alisa mentioned, we are trying to have more educational opportunities. And then uh, please go to the page four. Okay, uh, this is again the uh, copy from FSA homepage. Uh, as you can see this uh, page, this is a timeline of actions to be taken in each focus just I mentioned. Market participants can monitor and check the progress and the missing parts, if any. This will be updated uh, in due course. There are, and then there would be many challenges for Japanese sustainable finance because our country is heavily relying on fossil fuel and the manufacturing industry. Also, we are under uh, uncertain market back, back drop, market backdrop, as you know. Therefore, I strongly believe that collaboration between public sector and private sector is essential to promote uh, this uh, important sustainable finance going forward. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Back to you, Mariko-san. Yes. Thank you, Reiko-san. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Mariko Kawaguchi, and I'm also a director of Japan CIF. And then um, thank you, Reiko-san, for, for a very brief, but uh, with a lot of information. And people, lots of people now understand that the things are going so fast. Um, compared to last 10 years, probably the last 10 years progress is now condensed to this, this year's progress. And maybe uh, Fujisan could mention about that because you know, Fujisan has been leading the uh, asset management, which is one of the pioneers of the ESG investment in Japan, has more than 13, 14 years of uh, history of, the, of ESG investment. Uh, Fujisan, floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Kawaguchi-san. So my name is Fuji. So uh, uh, Yoshida-san, could you uh, please? Okay, yes. So today I'm going to talk about our net zero journey as well as our ESG integration in the past. So uh, please go on. So Nisiasen Management is a wholly owned subsidiary of Nippon Life Insurance Group with $270 billion uh, of AUM. So next, please. Yes, this is a history. So as Kawaguchi-san mentioned, uh, we have integrated ESG factors into our investment process since 2008. And in 2019, uh, we, got, we became a supporter uh, of TCFD. And last year, March, uh, we joined uh, in Net Zero Asset Managers Initiative. So that's kind of very brief history. Next page, please. Yeah, this is our commitment in uh, Net Zero Asset Managers Initiative. So we have 60% uh, of total AUM initially committed to be managed in line with uh, Net Zero. So this 60% includes all of our equities and credit funds. So we are currently excluding sovereign and private assets as uh, until the major uh, clear method uh, of uh, uh, GHG will be announced. So, and for those 60%, uh, we are going to reduce uh, the GHG by half uh, by 2009, 2030. 
So that's uh, current our commitment. So how do we uh, achieve this? So please go on to the next page. So this is a distribution of our financed emission by our holdings. So we hold uh, over 3,500 names. And by looking at this financed emission, so only 2% of the names account for more than 70% of financed emission. So we are focusing on these names, actually 70 companies uh, to make engagement with. And we're gonna support uh, those uh, companies uh, to reduce uh, GHG emission going forward. So please go on next page. So this is our ESG approach. So uh, first, uh, we are figuring out the materiality of ESG factors. Then we reflect those material factors into long-term uh, earning forecast, which is number two. And then we calculate corporate value through discounted cash flow model. So this is very uh, simple explanation uh, of our ESG integration. So uh, we put stronger earning forecast for high ESG lending companies. So that, that's our uh, the, uh, process. And please, uh, could you go to the next page? So this is a just E rating performance in the past. So this is the difference in stock return between high E rating and low E rating. So uh, as you can see this chart, until 2012, the E1 rating uh, underperformed a lot. But uh, from 2013, it gets uh, starting to uh, outperform uh, for the eight consecutive years. So uh, the market momentum to our uh, environment is getting uh, higher and higher, I think. And on next page, so this is an E rating scenario analysis. So this uh, matrix, uh, this number shows how our E1 rating company can increase corporate value relative to our benchmark topics. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, our E1 rating names can increase corporate value by 19% higher than that of uh, topics. So uh, that means our E1 rating uh, is kind, uh, relatively re resilient under 1.5 degree scenario. Okay, next page, this is the last one. And uh, this is a kind of survey. And uh, this shows how people are willing to change their lives to help reduce emissions. So looking at this chart, awareness of a crisis of Japanese are very low. So uh, the no change at all and only a few change are very, uh, the, the highest among these countries. So the, the uh, apparently awareness of crisis was very low, but I feel the uh, uh, sense of crisis is increasing a lot uh, recently. And a year ago, I think the, the, the issue was a matter of planet, but now I feel it's a matter of economy, matter of global competition, and matter of uh, national power. Uh, uh, one of the uh, trigger is scope three uh, disclosure introduction from next year. Mm -hmm. And also uh, we will have the border carbon tax in EU from 2026. If those things happen, the higher, uh, higher emission products uh, should be avoided. So that, that should be uh, directly uh, affecting uh, corporations earnings going forward. So uh, that's why I think uh, these days, uh, corporations uh, sense of crisis are increasing. So it's gonna be a change even in Japan. So that, that's our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fuji-san, for um, your message was very, very strong. And listening to Reiko-san and Fuji-san's message, I felt like, you know, we're at the era of uh, 
Meiji Xin, when we opened up the country 150 years ago, we we're closing the country for 300 years. And then there came a big ship, which asked us to use more coal, <laughs> coal ship with the very dark, dark smokes. And then we opened up the country and then we followed the what Westerners were doing and we catch up in very short a period of time. So listening to what you have been saying that we're at the another Meiji uh, era. No, this time from coal to no coal, uh, to zero carbon, which is uh, coming very fast. So we are expecting a very rapid change, probably revolutional change is happening in the, these two, three years amid uh, cheap, cheaper yen and the uh, Ukraine crisis and everything that, uh, but the things of changing to net zero is going now, starting now, is the message we could produce to on a global basis. And I'd like to invite uh, James from AXIF, and then um, I'd like to hear your view about the recent development of the government sector and financial sector, and also the actual individual uh, asset manager sector at the point of view. Thank, thank you very much for inviting me onto this webinar. It's, it's been I've, I've I've learned so much from these presentations, and I'm and I'm really absolutely thrilled that that there's so much amazing work going on in Japan. So 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 thank you for having me as part of today um so i'm i'm james alexander i'm chief executive of uk sif so we are the equivalent of jsif in the united kingdom um and we presented a similar webinar to this um about a month ago um and the recording is on the gsia website if you'd like to 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 see more um and uh, and we'll be going around the world with gsia looking at different market updates so i'm i'm so pleased that here in Japan, you've set the bar high for for how to do these updates and uh, and 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 the, the to have the regulators on board to have fund managers on board um, and and to, to really share what's what's happening. Um, and, and what I've been really struck by was some of the similarities between um, the UK context and, and, and Japan. And, and, I, and I suppose that's not surprising across the world. We see um, we see more and more investment going into um, sustainable finance and sustainability. Um, and I saw your, your chart right at the beginning about how many trillion yen, 514 trillion yen, um, and the huge growth uh, of sustainable finance in Japan. Um, and also of the retail market growing as well. We're seeing that in the UK. Um, we've been doing um, opinion polling of public opinion for more than 10 years. Um, and in that time, the number of people who who only want to invest their funds um, in, in, in things that will make returns and who don't care about the world, that, that, that has really gone down. You know, people really do care about, about having this joint objective of, of course, financial returns, but also making a positive difference. And people do not want to see the money that they're investing causing bad things to happen in the world. And that that's, I think, the whole basis of the work that we are all doing um, on, on a global level to, to grow sustainable finance. And that's why we're all here and why we're, why we're joining in with this webinar today. Um, uh, I, I also really enjoyed hearing the presentation of the net zero 2050 ambition. Um, and it does sound as though you know, you're you're focusing really strongly on making this a reality. Um, and, and, and the UK is similar. So we in the UK, we have a law um, that, that the UK should become net zero. So it's actually passed by Parliament as a law. Um, we have an interim law as well, which is that emissions should be reduced by 78% by 2035. Um, and I think that's a really important guiding law um, that, that, that gives us that, that, that stepping stone to the 2050 law. But it's, but it's amazing to see that, that you're focusing so strongly on, on achieving this. Um, and what I really liked um, in, in the presentation, um, the regulatory presentation in particular, was to see that transition finance is a really big part of it. And, in, and I, think, I think globally, but here in the UK, we have this problem too, that, that so much of the economy is not aligned with where it needs to be. Um, and as a financial services industry, we have a responsibility with our stewardship, with our engagement, um, with active ownership, 
to to help drive um, and push the real economy to 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 enhance its sustainability. Um, and so I'm 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 really thrilled to see this transition focus be be so much part of it. Um, and actually, in the UK, we're looking at new sustainability requirements um, and labels for funds. Um, and I think one of the key elements of that will be about the transition and how is it that funds when they're labelled sustainable can help to create and encourage the transition. Um, and we have a stewardship code, um, which, which is all about companies, um, fund managers and, and, and ASA owners being recognised for the stewardship work that they do um, and, and, and how effective that stewardship is, particularly for, from our perspective in relation to achieving um, sustainability goals. Um, uh, I, I also like how how so much of your emissions are now being focused on. So I think seventy percent of emissions are being covered um, uh, in 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 the and and I think it's very hard for countries and governments to focus on all of the emissions. So I think seventy percent is a really good starting point for that um, uh, in terms of the, the the transition and the sector by sector approach. Something we've been calling for in the UK is for the government to look at different sectors and to think about what the pathway should be but also specifically to then think about, well, what are the indicators that the investment is flowing into those pathways? Um, uh, and, and, and so taking a, a, a sector sectoral approach to say, okay, in steelmaking, um, are we getting the money flowing into steelmaking that can help create that transition um, and, and doing it by sector? And if, and if we see a sector that doesn't have the money flowing, um, how can government and, and, and the financial services industry intervene to create the scenario where that money can flow in those sectors that aren't getting the transitional finance? Uh, and so that's a really, a really important part for us. And we want to see our government doing that. And it looks like you're, you're taking a really strong focus on that too. Um, uh, uh, and so, yeah, I think that was, that was my, uh, that was, uh, you know, among, amongst my, my, my key, my key observations. And I just think, wow, you're, you're doing fantastic things and I'm so pleased to have this webinar because I've learned so much about about Japan uh, and about and about the work that you're doing and 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 for me I think this is I, I want I want to share the recording of this with all the UK regulators that we work with I want them to see um <laughs> because because joined up thinking joined up approaches um converging different regulations around the world i think is so important um uh you know, mr fuji you were talking about your fund management i'm sure lots of that is international how do we how do we um uh, how do we make sure that your the regulations you have to work to are consistent across the world uh, but also consistent and driving forward action so 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 not just a low bar but a really kind of high bar that moves things forwards across the world so so and that's that's what i want you know Riker and um, Marika and i uh, and masu um and then the gsia team with simon as the chair from from australia um, we're talking about this how can how can we make sure that gsia plays its part in 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 advancing this international convergence of regulations that can drive you know high ambition and create the transition across the whole of the economy of the world. So, so thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful to you for, for presenting this webinar uh, and for these reflections and the opportunity to, to present here. So, so thank you. Tim, thank you for sharing the uh, global and also the uh, UK's view on this. And uh, we're sort of relieved that we're not much behind. <laughs> Probably we have the momentum this momentum of Gawasan now. So I think that the government sector should be more uh, fluttered by this. And I'd like to ask uh, Fuji-san about, you know, James has just mentioned about la la labeling of funds, labeling of funds of the sustainable funds or the, do you think that's relevant in Japan? And that's one question. And the other question is that uh, uh, what the METI has been doing that the, the promote transitional finance. If those transitional finance schemes work well, do you think that will make your business much easier? Which means that you could find better ESG rating companies and outperform the market. So I got two questions. Okay, so first, uh, in terms of the fund label, mm -hmm. I think uh, we have no kind of concrete regulation in terms mm -hmm. of the fund label at, uh, at this moment in Japan. 
uh, unlike uh, EU and the kind of, uh, I think uh, recently SEC, US SEC uh, is uh, made a proposal on this fund uh, label, but we don't have. So I think uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, we have to show uh, what we think uh, ESG investing is like this. And we have to show the uh, why uh, this is an EC fund mm. by showing data. So mm. that's, uh, and uh, we have to disclose to our clients. That's what we are uh, thinking and we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the uh, transition finance, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's very nice uh, uh, to hear that the, uh, uh, big support from uh, Japanese, uh, uh, Japanese uh, policy maker. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I what we think is uh, kind, it's kind of uh, it's not a clear path uh, for us because uh, uh, Medi announced 20 trillion yen of uh, support for industry, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we are not sure what part is for the uh, uh, for what part is affecting each company's uh, business going forward. So uh, we want to see that uh, more detailed support uh, from the, the policymaker. So that, that's, that's what uh, I'm now thinking. Okay. Yes. And you have to be very careful, you know, just uh, big money news. It's not good enough to actually uh, analyze each company's uh, future growth. Right. Okay. So. Okay, so more concrete ideas will be necessary. And yeah. Reiko-san, do you have more ideas that you, or you have some words that you didn't talk in the last five minutes short presentation? Um, so uh, if I need, if I can add a couple of points, as Mariko-san or Fujisan mentioned, uh, Japan government has announced 20 trillion yen uh, JGB uh, transition uh, government bonds and then again uh, we look forward to seeing what kind of use of proceeds is expected and then also uh, just giving money is not good enough you need to have a clear mm. view uh, on what kind of mm. on what kind of direction japan is going to what mm. kind of society a sustainable society uh, the government has in mind, and then also the people in Japan should share that view uh, among the people, not only in Japan, but also uh, with international uh, market participants. And I'm so happy that James was so far supportive <laughs> on uh, our, uh, our initiative so far. And the second point is, again, uh, in order to grow the business, we need to have the uh, skilled people to understand what is ESG, what is ESG investment, what is sustainable. And I'm still uh, on learning curve, but uh, we need to have more people who can understand clearly what we are doing. And then also not only financial institutions, but uh, uh, public people, uh, consumers should understand uh, the importance of ESG or sustainable uh, business, not only environment, but also uh, social issues as well. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding, um, and I also like to to hear your view about the uh, um, fund la labeling. I just thought that the, if you're looking at the uh, lots of consumer products like coffee, chocolate, we got like fair trade label and everything that the, if you're buying things, you are so used to seeing, choosing label stuff. Financial products, why not? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why now uh, sustainable uh, expert panel of sustainable finance is trying to have a code of conduct mm -hmm. and then also ESG fund provider. Uh, that point will be going to be discussed uh, in the coming months or coming years to mm -hmm. have more clarity on labeled uh, mm -hmm. product, not only bonds, but also uh, funds as well in order to avoid any greenwash. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe that will make Fujisan's business easier because you know the if they you got the label that's more transparent in a way and more uh, sub objective. So do you think that will actually um, accelerate the market expansion? 
or the uh, acknowledgement of the ESG among the, just the general public, which is now related to uh, Reiko-san has mentioned that we need more nationwide discussion, what kind of uh, vision we have for the net zero. And without having that, we don't know where to go with a lot of money. <laughs> so that kind of discussion should be uh, um, stimulated. And uh, James, do you have that kind of nationwide discussion in UK that the uh, net zero community, what kind of net zero community that the UK people want? Do you have that kind of a discussion? Yeah, I think I think one of the one of the um, interesting questions is is how or, or in questions investors ask is how much is government committed to this? Now, of course, having a law is a really important point, but but also, you know, I think there's a question of you know what is the government strategy and, and what and what does what does the country look like when we are net zero and what do our lives look like? You know, how do, how do I how do I go to work? Um, what do I eat? You know, where, 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 you know, how do I how do I heat my home um, for a normal a normal citizen of of the country? And so, and and the answers to those questions, and and the way the government thinks that that's going to work, and the strategy the government's going to put in the rules and regulations is of course extremely important for investors because we then, with the idea of the, the understanding of the strategy and the timeline, we can then invest and we can then, you know, support companies that are, that are, that are going in that direction and, and say, oh yeah, your, your product is very aligned to where the, where the future of the, of, of the country is going to be. You know, that's, that's a positive investment. And I think that then stimulates the market. And in the UK, we've had, we've had some, you know, for, we had COP26 was hosted in the UK and, um, and that was a great moment for the government to publish its net zero strategy, which was which was well received. Um, we, we we've also had some some negative points. So so for example, home retrofits to make buildings more energy efficient um, has not gone as well as we as, as it should be going in the UK, um, and it hasn't been the focus of public policy. And there have been a few a few policies that have been brought in that haven't worked very well and been withdrawn. And that has eroded investor confidence in the transition for for buildings, and 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 th that's that's exactly where government needs to get this right. We need to have long term policy that investors can be confident with, um, and then they can invest on the basis that policy is going to follow in the same direction. Um, and and so I think that's that's a really a really key piece. So we need the government pathway, and I think it's part of our 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 view is that you know it, this can't just be the private sector mm. this but it also can't just be government mm. it needs to be everybody it needs to be citizens in our normal lives it needs to be the government pushing this forward with regulation and with subsidies and taxation in the right place it needs to be the private sector um and and, and something that the, that the government's pushing for now is transition plans to be mandatory across the economy so every every big company and every financial services company will require a transition plan um, from next year, um, which will sort of demonstrate what its target is and how it's going to get there and how it's going to report on, on its progress towards getting there. And investors will be able to look at that and to decide, well, that transition plan is, is good or not good. Um, and that, that will impact on our investment decisions. But one of the key things is how do we make sure that transition plan is linked to the company's financials? So if the company says, we're going to, to, to phase out our use of coal in five years, but the financials are still depreciating a coal pirate asset for 15 years, which is it? Which is right? You know, and how do those, how does the transition plan match the financials? So, so really interesting policy questions going on here. Um, and one final thing to just to just flag um, that Ryoku mentioned is, is this is not just um, uh, an environmental transition, there's social issues here too. And the just transition is really important. How do we protect those people whose jobs might be affected or whose communities might be affected? Um, because that is how, if you don't have a just transition, we don't believe you have a transition at all, because politically it becomes very difficult. Um, and we're seeing already the cost of living challenges that the world is experiencing with fuel price increases um, are making life very difficult. How do we how do we make sure that that doesn't flow through into stopping action on on, on emissions reduction? So I'll, I'll stop there. OK, thank you, James. Lots of new homeworks. Ogawa-san, you, know, you, you heard that the uh, you're doing a good job, but you still got lots of more homeworks. And then we have lots of business chances, but there are lots of new challenges coming up for Fujisan and also for um, Hayasan coming up. But probably that's 
something that we like to do because you know we're looking for a sustainable future, which is the the, the every, what everybody wants. And then the financial industry, like James has said, that the, everybody has the role to play in this. But actually, financial industry is one of the major engine because they have the money to allocate in price what is important and what is not. So I think that the, uh, the financial industry should think that the, we have more responsibility and more challenges, which is good. And then so we're just running out of time. Do we have some one more minute for each speaker to say one word each? Is that possible? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll go go some, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I, I got many inputs from the speakers and I would like to say uh, the Kauri san said it is a new era of the decarbonization. So we need to speed up this action. So for uh, so far, we have based on the very uh, robust experiences and data or what we can do, then therefore we may the policies, but maybe we have to change the style. So first we set a target or the shorter uh, direction and we should consider, uh, we should discuss with the citizens and private sectors how we can actually practice this plan. So we might think we have to think the new way of policy making. And the other thing is uh, all these initiatives are usually made at the financial side, but the, they are the great driving drivers. So we have to invite all the stakeholders here. So uh, the participation of the industries is indispensable. They, they know what we, they can do. And if they, we encourage them in a positive way, they can maybe speed up their, this initiative, initiative faster. So probably we should open up the discussion to wider scope of people. Thank you. Thank you. 10 seconds, Fuji-san and, and Hayas-san, and then 20 seconds, Arai-san, for the, the closing remarks. Okay, so thank you very much. So I think uh, ESG investment is currently seen often regarded as investing in good companies. But if we want to make uh, the world better place, I think we need to make bad companies better. So mm. in that sense, we need to invest in bad companies. Mm. So in that sense, so how to think about ESG investment should be changed going forward. So that's my message for transition. Thank you. Yes, Sam, please. Yeah, uh, the most important thing is for us to always think about the future generation, not the current generation, but also we should think about next generation and how we can make the world better for the future generation. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Yarai-san, please. Well, time is over. So for me, a quick reminder to the audience. Uh, you are very welcome to attend the webinars uh, planned for the later this year by other G, uh, GSIA members from the United States, Europe, Australia, Russia, and Canada, I think. Uh, you can find all the webinar information on the GSIA website and how to make registration rules uh, available. And with that, I want to thank you all the speakers and panelists. Thank you for all your insight and willingness to dive into detail. We thank you, the audience as well. We are very grateful for your participation and your attention. And we hope you find this webinar helpful. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next market update. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye from us. Thank you. <laughs>